Hi everybody, I'm Kathy Hester and welcome to my kitchen. You might know me from some of my vegan cookbooks or I'm also a blogger at plantbasedinstantpot.com and healthyslowcooking.com which are all vegan plant-based recipes. So hopefully you'll come over there and find some good recipes with me. So what we're gonna talk about today is soy curls. So why would I even wanna talk about soy curls? Well, it's the beginning of the year, a lot of people are kind of transitioning or trying veganism for the first time or trying just to cut down on meat. And sometimes you're the only one in your family that feels that way. So it can seem kind of hard to tug the whole family along. But if you have something that's really a great texture you can make taste delicious and you can fit into like all your old family recipes, then that's a really big help. So that's why I wanted to talk about this. Now, soy curls look a lot like TVP and I'll show you from an overhead view in a little while, but they're actually one ingredient here, which is non-GMO soybeans. So that's why I'm using a brand name called Butler's because it's made in the Pacific Northwest and it's only non-GMO soybeans. That's the only ingredient. So they're cooked, smushed, and extruded. Okay, why would you use soy curls? Do you have some old family favorites like maybe a chicken casserole, maybe chicken enchiladas, anything that would use kind of a chicken tender? Though we can do other things with soy curls too. So we can also pulse them and make them kind of like ground meat as well. So really the main purpose in doing this, besides they're really pretty good, they're good for you, they're certainly not bad for you, is that you can get that familiar textures. And that's really gonna help your family who's not on board with going all the way vegan. Because at least they get to still have their Sunday evening favorites and things like that. What do soy curls taste like? Honestly, if you don't put anything with them, they don't taste like much at all. So why should you use them? Because you can flavor them. So there's a lot of different things you can do. So you can even make them taste kind of like chicken by putting a little bit of nutritional yeast. And I often use poultry seasoning with that. And in fact, you can find a recipe for air fried soy curls that are like Southern chicken style on healthyslowcooking.com and you can just go up and search for that and they're so good it's one of my most popular recipes i just toss it with a little bit of flour and cornmeal and these seasonings and then they just get nice and crispy and you can serve them on like a bed of mashed potatoes with some gravy so again it's a great way to recapture some of those food memories that you had before while still being pretty healthy so where can you get soy curls? If you're not in the Pacific Northwest, you're probably not gonna find them in your local Whole Foods or co-op. But if you do, Butler's Food is located in the Pacific Northwest, so you guys have it easy. I've also heard some of my uh, readers in Canada have found them at Seventh Day Adventist stores as well. But here's what you can do. There are two really easy ways that you can get Butler soy curls no matter where you are. One is order them on Amazon. And you can order them in bags, usually a six pack of bags is what I do. It's a little bit cheaper. You can also get a big box of them. And I think it's like a 10 or 15 pound box. It's probably like a 12 pound box. It's somewhere in that range. And then what you can do is keep those in the freezer. And if you get a six pack, it's a good idea to keep them in the freezer, especially in the summer, because they're non-GMO soybeans, which means they will go bad. The other place that you can buy Butler soy curls, shocker, is from Butler soy curls themselves. And um, they'll send you some little samples and things like that. So I say support the company if you can. And if you can't get them to deliver to you, maybe Amazon will. So how do you cook with them? Let's open these up so I can kind of show you what they really look like and you can get a better idea, right? So I'm gonna put about half of these in a bowl right now. That's usually how much I make for about four servings. And I want you to notice something. See how there's crumbs in the bottom and bigger strips on the top? 
And that big bag that I was telling you about, the big box, you can sort them by size because these are great for fajitas or something like that. Whereas these little smaller pieces would be great for like a chickeny soup or tacos or things like that. Okay, so they're super dry and you can probably hear it crisp open, right? So we've got that. Sometimes I will break these into smaller strips, but it's even best if you can use it for whatever you want. Like I am going to make some fajitas with this. I'm not going to pick out these little pieces either. They can just be bonuses. So the first thing you have to do is you do have to soak these soy curls. And you can soak it with either water or broth. I'm going to use some water. I've got some pipe in hot water in this teapot, but you could have warmed up some broth as well. And I'm just going to kind of cover them. There you go. And we probably don't even need all that. If you feel like some are sticking out a little bit extra, you can put a spoon on top of them if you want to, or just pop them in there. It really doesn't take long for these to soak. And see the difference? And that was just a few minutes. So really, you don't need to soak them for very long at all. So after they've soaked and they've reconstituted like this, we want to strain them out a little bit. We're not really trying to make these bone dry, but we are squishing a lot of the water out. So you can see there's a lot of water. See, there's water running out of here. And when I'm pushing it, even more is coming out. So depending on what you're flavoring it with, you're going to want to push more of it out. But think of it this way. You kind of want it to end up looking like chicken wood. So you don't want it too watery, but also we're not trying to get every teeny tiny last drop out either. You can't really mess this up. It's going to be okay. Let's say you didn't get enough water out. Then what you're going to do is cook whatever you have it in. So let's say I didn't get enough water out. Now I've put this in with some teriyaki sauce. My teriyaki sauce is a little watery. I'm cooking that on the stove. I cook it a little longer. So, and I've not been able to get them too dry. <laughs> but um, if you do, let me know. I want to know that story. So let's gonna put these in here and let you see again from overhead. Okay, so we've gotten this water out. And even though this water is colored, it's just from some of the things off the soy curls. But see how that looks? It's like nice, fluffy chicken strips. And I just love soy curls for that. And they're so easy. They don't take up a lot of freezer room unless you get the big giant box. They're just really, really great. Okay, so now you know how to reconstitute soy curls to use it in any of your normal chicken recipes. So let's try a recipe, shall we? We're gonna do super easy, family-friendly fajitas. So I am going to be using <laughs> frozen peppers and onions, cause I can. <laughs> right? I'm going to be using some different spices and we're going to talk about how much of these are going to go in, but we're going to use a little cumin powder, a little garlic powder, some smoked paprika. If you hate smoke, you can leave that out and, or just use regular paprika. We're going to use Mexican oregano. You could use marjoram or regular oregano. Mexican oregano is more fragrant. It's kind of like in between marjoram and regular oregano. And it just has kind of this lemony floral flavor. So if you have it, use it for sure. Uh, we're also going to use a little bit of jalapeno powder. You can leave that out if you want to, or if you have some wahilo or some ancho chili powder, you could use it. We are also going to use something I call chili for the stew powder, which is like chili seasoning blend and that could have a lot of different things in it so it could be hot or not it usually has chili peppers cumin garlic and oregano 
And the reason I say that versus the other is that this is chili powder, ancho is chili powder, right? So if you have some of those really neat ones, like ancho and wahilo are very mild. They're actually milder than jalapeno. So you could use that and it brings this rich flavor to your fajitas. So what we're gonna do is mix all this together. This is even sheet pan soy curl fajitas. So it's a super easy dish to make. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start adding some of our spices. We're gonna do two teaspoons of Mexican oregano. And remember, these don't have any flavor at this point. If we don't put something really good and flavorful in there, it's going to be really boring. We're going to do two teaspoons of smoked paprika. And actually, I go a little heavy because I love smoky flavors. If you love smoky flavors and you don't have smoked paprika, you might be able to use some liquid smoke if you have it. Now, this is our magic chicken dust. <laughs> Basically, it makes things taste like chicken and cheese. It's nutritional yeast. I'm going to put one extra one in there. It called for two, but I'm going to be crazy. We're going to do um, one teaspoon of garlic powder. And this is granulated garlic. And in case you're wondering, garlic powder isn't something weird. <laughs> it's actually garlic that's been dried and ground up. So it's a perfectly natural ingredient. We can use one teaspoon of salt, or you can use a salt substitute if you're on a salt-free diet. And also, if you think that's a little much, you could use less. Remember, we're adding in a lot of peppers with this too, so the salt kind of goes for the whole part of the dish. Now we're gonna do half a teaspoon of cumin, which is just really, that kind of dark, nummy flavor that we get in Indian foods and in a lot of Mexican foods. And it kind of gives it a meatier flavor. I'm going to use a half a teaspoon of jalapeno powder. What I like about jalapeno powder is that it adds kind of this greener, wonderful aroma. All right, and then we're going to put chili for the stew powder in which is whatever blend you usually use for your chilies. And this one's from Trader Joe's, so it's easy to get and accessible. All right, so now we're just gonna toss this, and what I want you to see is all that's gonna stick some to that wet chicken. And by chicken, I mean soy curls, <laughs> our faux chicken. And remember, most of this red powder is paprika, so it looks a little spicier than it is. Okay, so you want to get this kind of mixed up nice. And the same thing, if I was putting a coating on here like I was talking about for the air fried soy curls, it's going to stick some. You could also use a batter as well. So you could do these like, you could take them, put them in a little flour, then put them in a batter, and then finish them off with a little flour or breadcrumbs or something like that. There's so many ways that you can use this. Okay, I feel like that's pretty good and mixed up. I'm opening my bag of frozen veggies. And we'll see if I use the whole bag or not. Cheryl, <laughs> my wife actually picks out all of the veggies and things like this. So yeah, I think we can use we can use the whole bag in here. I'll eat them all. Okay, and I'm just trying to get some of that seasoning to kind of come off on there too, just to get it a little more mixed up uniformly. Now that that's all mixed up, I've got the oven preheating at 400 degrees. You can also do this in your air fryer. If you have a Breville or a toaster oven air fryer combo, you can do that. Um, just realize some of the juices as these peppers and onions cook are gonna drip. So if mine over here, I have a drip pan in the bottom. If you have the Breville, it's gonna go on those covered heating elements. So I wouldn't recommend that, but if you're using a basket one, 
that'd be great too. So basically, I'm just going to spread this over. <laughs> and this makes about enough for four people. So if you're a larger family, you could put this on two sheets for sure and double the recipe. All you'd use is a whole package of soy curls and two frozen onions and peppers. And you can use fresh onions and peppers too. Don't let me stop you. Um, that's my oven getting ready right now. It's saying, hello, feed me some fajitas. Okay, so let's put it this way. You guys can see it a little bit. And, you know, in, just like in your air fryer and your oven, we want to make things, you know, as single layer as possible without being super crazy about it. Sometimes I get a little super crazy, so it's okay if you do. Okay, so see how we're just moving these around. And I don't care if some of this gets off the paper. I put it on the paper because I did not want to put any oil with this. If you wanted to, you could oil your baking sheet or you could toss everything in a little bit of oil if you use oil. That's totally up to you. We avoid it around here in most things. We should use it for treats. And so what we're gonna do See, I, see how I've got a little extra room. I could, you just don't want everything bunched up in the middle. So the keys we're going to be looking for is for the vegetables to be cooked, but still crispy, and these to be a little darker and drier. That's going to give it a nice chewy consistency. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the oven for about five minutes, five to 10 minutes. If you're in an air fryer, definitely do five. If you're in an oven, five to 10 minutes. Then we're gonna pull it back out, shake it around, see how things are going, okay? I'll see you back in a second. Okay, so we've got our wonderful things out for the first time. I let these go for about 10 minutes because sometimes my veggies are a little less frozen than they were. I just took them out of the freezer. Okay, and I've got the fan on. So you can see these are a little bit drier, like maybe just a little bit. So it just depends on how crispy you want them. Like I feel like the peppers seem pretty good to me. So if you were gonna make this maybe as a meal prep and heat it up again later, I might stop here. But if you wanna eat it tonight, I think it would be nice to have it cooked just a little more and get a little more of a crispness edge, kind of like that one has on the rest of the soy curls. So I'm just mixing this around a little bit. And I don't care if I go off the parchment, I can wash this pan. It just makes it still a lot easier to clean up, you know, a half an inch of it than the whole pan. That's why I'm doing it. So I'm just mixing this around. So the stuff that maybe seems a little wetter, I might pull out to the edges a little bit more but you don't have to be that strategic. It's just dinner. It's just a sheet pan dinner. And I'm saying that to myself as I want to like make some sort of crazy pattern with my soy curls. So if you're, if you're feeling that way too, I'm with you. So don't worry. All right, so we're gonna put this back in the oven for about another 10 minutes. So this is actually five minutes later, not 10. So. I wanted to check on them and I think five extra minutes. So we did, I did 10 minutes in the beginning, five minutes later on. Sometimes you might do five minutes in the beginning, 10 minutes later on. But to me, that looks, a, it makes it a little chewier when they're just a little bit crisper. If I went five more minutes, they're gonna be a little too crisp, I think. And if you're doing this in your air fryer, again, do it in five minute increments because I find that that's the best way to learn how it should work. So now this is, hey, it smells really good. You can taste this now and like we could still sprinkle some extra salt or other things, but like I'm looking at this so we could serve it over salad. We could serve it over grain, make like a a chipotle bowl that's better than a chipotle bowl and costs a lot less. Um, we could put it in a burrito. We could put that burrito in the air fryer and make a chimichanga. 
put it in tacos. We could put this on top of um, a tofu scramble and make kind of like ranchero style. We could do just about anything. And honestly, you could just eat it like this too if you wanted to. But I think it, it's more fun if you have some other things. So what I like to do is have this in a bowl and then have all the accoutrements around. So maybe have brown rice or quinoa. Um, you could have some black beans, even just a can of black beans you heated up. These could all be things that they could play with. Um, lettuce, chopped onions, chopped cilantro, um, more fresh vegetables, salsas, a vegan sour cream, vegan cheese, whatever is on your menu for the evening can be there. And you could have the taco shells, either soft or hard. And there you go. It's an amazing dinner. I've already shown you how to make one awesome thing with soy curls. We reconstituted them. We made soy fajitas in the oven. So I told you you had to soak your soy curls and reconstitute them, but there's a way around that. So I wanted to show you a another recipe using my favorite appliance, the Instant Pot. We're going to use soy curls that we have not soaked because basically we're going to reconstitute them in the broth inside of the Instant Pot. This method works really well if you're making a soup, a stew, something like that. You can use your Instant Pot, you can do it in the slow cooker, or you could do it on the stove top. Really, you could do it in a Dutch oven as well. Anything you do in a slow cooker, you could do in a Dutch oven. But I'm gonna make kind of this rustic chicken stew. So I've got about two cups of chopped potatoes and about a cup and a half of chopped carrots, or really they're in half moons. They're not really chopped. I'm going to use a few, a half, about a half a bag of Butler soy curls, which is the other half of the bag I started using. For seasonings, we're still going to keep that nutritional yeast, which is really going to give that chickeny flavor, but I'm not going to put the nutritional yeast in at the beginning. Instead, I'm going to use it at the end to preserve those B vitamins. I'm going to use some poultry seasoning a little bit of onion and garlic powder because I'm being lazy. You could saute onions and garlic in here and then do what I'm gonna do. Or decide today's an easy cooking day for me and do it this way. So I wanted to show you two recipes that you really can make when you don't wanna cook because that's where the problem is. When we're like, woohoo, let's put the music on. Let's have a glass of wine or a mocktail and enjoy time in the kitchen. Those aren't the days that are hard. Those aren't the days that are a problem. When it's like, oh, I'm so tired. I don't want to do anything. That's when it's hard. So I could have used um, carrots that were already shredded. Um, if you didn't want to cut up the potatoes, I peeled the potatoes, which is always a chore to me, but mine were kind of a little icky. They weren't, they weren't perfect, so I wanted to peel them. If you have like some young potatoes, don't peel them just quarter them and toss them on in, right? Let's make this as easy as possible. Okay, so I've just added everything in here together. They've got four cups of water. I just upped the water, added the potatoes and the carrots. Everything's covered up nicely, and we're gonna cook that for about 10 minutes. Okay, depending on what kind of Instant Pot you have, if you look over here, you can kind of see that it's saying preheating. So you can kind of see the steps along. If you got the Duo, you can't, but I do highly recommend the Duo. I think it's the best all around Instant Pot. It does um, yogurt and different things like that that I think are kind of important, but it's usually the cheapest. Over Black Friday, the Pro was exactly the same price as the Duo. So if you get a sale like that, go for the Pro, is my opinion. So what I do when I'm cooking something like this is I leave out my seasonings. Because I, once this cooks, I'm going to taste it. We're, we might need to add some more salt. We'll add some pepper. I'm going to add the nutritional yeast. But what if I taste it and I'm like, well, I don't think that is as oniony as I thought it was going to be. I could add some more onion powder. I can add some more poultry seasoning. So remember, at the end of cooking, tasting is just as important as tasting all along the way because maybe my onion powder's gotten old, right? Maybe it worked the last time I made it six months ago. It was perfect at this exact measurement. 
though I tend not to make exact measurements. And I would just like to say, just with both of these recipes, soy curls, and just cooking in general, try not to stress yourself out. Really, it's, it's just about putting a little bit of love into what you're doing. And if you hate cooking, that can be hard, but if you find something that you know you love to eat, and it isn't hard to make, that's gonna make your life so much better. And if you don't love to cook because you're just a little unsure, the more you cook, the easier it gets. The more you're gonna be able to like make these judgment calls and go, well, I know she said to do a half a teaspoon of smoked paprika, but I love smoke. I'm gonna put a teaspoon in and to feel confident about that. So I have all the faith in the world in you. I know that you, if you choose to cook soy curls or not, another thing with these two recipes, if you have a soy allergy, you could easily use chickpeas instead, except in here we would not add extra water. We're adding extra liquid to reconstitute the soy curls, but with the fajitas, another thing you could do is slices of portobello mushroom, tofu in cubes, right? We could use um, drained shredded young jackfruit. So e any recipe can kind of be exchanged with something that you have. So if you're like, that looks really good, but I don't wanna wait a week to get my soy curls, then you can still use these recipes to do other things. Be sure to look into Kathy's Cooking Club. We have live cooking classes twice a month and we, have, we do four to five recipes in every one. And you can attend live when we're filming them or you can watch them later. There's no, you know, if you've got a busy life, fit it in where you fit it in. Also, when you join Kathy's Cooking Club, you get access to all the videos that I've filmed in the past three years for the club. So you can get that at kathyhester.podia.com. So that's K-A-T-H-Y-H-E-S-T-E-R dot P-O-D-I-A dot com. So Kathy's Cooking Club is $50 a month, but you can purchase individual classes for $35. So go in and I have two soy curl classes in there now and they are just amazing. And we're gonna have way more soy curl recipes coming up along with things like how to make your own tofu, how to make um, your own sauces, just all kinds of things. So we do everything from comfort food to staples to, I don't know, things with oats and stuff like that. So hopefully I'll see you over at kathyhester.podia.com. Okay, so now you can see that the beeper beep, it's done and we can release the pressure. So I'm going to move it a little bit this way, see? <laughs> and don't be scared, it's going to be easy. Okay, with this particular model, it just has an up and down. So see, I can let the steam out that way. Usually you have like a little, it's round and there's a little lever and you can press it. That's another way. This one releases it really, really fine whereas the normal one does not. So that's one of the reasons why I like this Instant Pot. So you can kind of see how fine the mist is. If you're using a Duo or another model, it's not gonna be this fine. And so water is gonna go places as you're releasing it. So I recommend that you wait about 10 minutes, so let it kind of keep warm for 10 minutes, and then use that lever until you start seeing some bigger drops of water come out. So the main reason I like this model is this, because when I'm doing classes or demos, you'll see now, I mean, it's still taking a while for the steam to release, but if I'm doing it that other way, it takes twice as long. Okay, so you can see this dropped. In this model, if you're using the Lux, it actually doesn't come past the hole when it comes to pressure, you have to kind of get used to it. And it may not be red, depending on which one. This lets you know really easily which one it is, up or down. Okay, I'm gonna get some steam. All right, that's looking pretty good. Take a smell. Okay, and see, I think this is pretty good right here at four cups. 
So you can see how the chicken got really big. And we'll smush a potato to the side. Yeah, the potatoes are done. If this is too thin for me, there are a couple things I can do. When I put some of the nutritional yeast in, that's going to help thicken it. I could also smash some of these potatoes. So there's two different ways. Or I could switch my Instant Pot to warm, and then I could just let this cook off. That's another way to do it, too, because every time we see that steam, that's what's going on. Okay, so we haven't put in the nutritional yeast, and I'm going to start with a quarter cup, which is about four tablespoons, I think. And again, we're not looking for exact, we're just looking for tasty. That's what's important to me. I'm also going to go ahead and put a couple of pinches of pepper, because this is kind of old-fashioned food, and in the South, where I live, in Durham, North Carolina, that means it's probably going to be a little peppery. Then we'll mix this in and see how the, the nutritional yeast also kind of thickened that up a little bit. And see, there's a particularly large piece of potato. I'll squish that. Just kind of, yeah, this is kind of the way I want my chicken stew to be. Now, if you'd rather this color be a little more yellow, you could add a little bit of turmeric. But let me get some tasting spoons and let's see what adjustments we might make. Okay, so first I'm just going to kind of taste this broth. Mmm, it definitely tastes chickeny. Mmm, it's definitely reminiscent of chicken. I think I would like to have another two tablespoons of nooch in here. So a quarter cup plus an eighth of a cup. As I'm tasting too, I think I'm going to put a little more garlic. I'm probably putting in about a quarter to a half a teaspoon. I'm going to put just a dash of onion powder, probably like a sixteenth of a teaspoon. I think I'd like a little more thyme, so I'm probably going to put in another teaspoon of thyme and like half a teaspoon of marjoram. And I'm guesstimating, but I'm kind of, I'm used to the palm of my hand <laughs> and guesstimating that way. I could add a little more poultry spice too, but I don't want it to get too sagey. I don't want it to taste like Thanksgiving, right? I just want it to be a little more reminiscent of a chickeny stew. And you get in there and smell that. It smells really good. Okay. I think it may need a little more salt too. Oh, that's really good now. I'm going to add probably another half teaspoon of salt to it. When we're looking at potatoes, oats, soy curls, things like that, I feel like they really kind of take in that flavor, that salt, and sometimes it needs a little bit more. But, I mean, this is not food to go on the front page of a magazine, <laughs> but it's good home eaten. And really, that took very little effort. We're looking at something like this. So it's pretty thick. It's got, you know, there is some, there's some juiciness to it, but I kind of wanted that. And if you wanted to be really lazy, again, you could use new potatoes. You just rinse and quarter, so you don't have to do any peeling. So again, you don't feel good. Use some shredded carrots or those carrot coins you can buy already cut up. You know, just get what you have to get and put in here. Or don't put in potatoes. Maybe just put in a drained can of chickpeas to kind of add that volume and fullness for you. So take this recipe and really think of it as a base for your own experimentation. We could have um, made it kind of like a beefy stew, too. And instead of using, like, nutritional yeast, I would have used mushroom powder or vegan beef broth, which is usually based on mushroom powder and soy sauce. So you could take the soy curls after they're reconstituted and put a little soy sauce on there to darken them up a little bit. You've got a lot to work with, and I hope you really enjoy it. So again, hopefully I'll see you over at plantbasedinstantpot.com or healthyslowcooking.com, or you'll get to be in my next class at Kathy's Cooking Club. And you can get there at 
kathyhester.podia.com. Thanks and have an amazing rest of your week.